Hey, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this mug of hot chocolate design, which was designed by me. Um, it's supposed to look like a mug of hot chocolate. I put marshmallows in it and a candy cane. Um, for some reason it does look black when you look in, but I used brown jelly bands, so I did use brown bands. But for whatever reason, it looks... this one looks brown, but this one kind of doesn't. Um, anyways, this is the design. I thought this would be really cute. Oh, we went blurry. There we go. I thought this would be... A cute design for around this time because usually it's cold so everyone's like drinking hot chocolate but yeah so this one doesn't have a face yet i just haven't put it on the thing yet i was just making this was the one i did just to make sure i knew how to do the pattern um i also realized i forgot to open my notebook to the correct page there it is okay but yeah so um band wise i don't know how many bands this takes i forgot to do the band count before starting to film so if you need to know the band count it'll be in the description as always um and yeah i honestly don't think this is a very difficult design either it's fairly easy it's actually really easy um there are a couple things we do that might be a little different if you but if you've made a couple it's not honestly that bad this design is fairly easy so uh yeah i don't have too much to say about this design but I think that's it. I mean, you can technically use this design to put whatever you want in the mug. I just made it look like hot chocolate, but you can just put whatever drink you want. But yeah, just... Yep. Okay. So, of course, for this design, you're going to need some bands. And whatever color you want for the mug today, I'm going to be using um, this these mango bands and then neon yellow for the mug. And then for the hot chocolate date today, I'm going to be using the jelly brown bands again. And then you're going to need a hook. You can use a rainbow loom hook, a crochet hook. Um, I'm going to be using my double-ended hook just because I really like this hook. And you're going to want something to mark your rows. I'll be using a C-clip, but you can use whatever you want. Also, you're going to need the bands to do the candy cane and the marshmallows if you want that. Of course, you don't have to. Um, you're going to want to get some stuff for the face, too. And, yeah, I think that's it. You're also going to need stuffing. I always forget to say that. I actually think I forgot stuffing today. I only have this tiniest clump of... Stuffing. I'll get more later. It's fine. But yeah, I think we'll get started. Um, so I'm just going to pick up some bands. Uh, I'm going to be making my mug look striped. That was the other thing I want to say. This guy's all one color. This guy I did like two stripes. Um, I think that's kind of one of the fun things about this design is there's a lot of different ways you can um, do the mugs different. <laughs> but yeah, today I'm going to be doing alternating colors just because I think that'll look fun. But you can do the, your mug however you want. You can do one color. You could do two colors. You could do three colors. I'm just, you know, a rainbow mug would be really cute. I just thought of that. But yeah. So you can just really have fun with a color placement, I feel like, on the mugs. Because there's just, like, so many um, different ways you can do that. I don't know. I was thinking of my band shirt, and then I was like, what am I doing? But yeah. Let me just pick up some bands so we can get started. Also, if you already know how to follow my patterns, it'll be in the description. So, yeah. I'm just picking up bands. Okay. I don't really know how to remember how to make this. So I need to see my pattern. <laughs> okay. Okay, so to start, we're going to start by wrapping a band three times around our hook. So we're going to go one. That's one. That's two. Three. And then we're going to be putting seven stitches in this cap band. If you don't know how to do that, I'll show you. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull a band through the whole cap band. Both ends back on our hook. Push the back one over the front one. With the first stitch, I've noticed this, you always want to pull it a little bit so it doesn't slip over the cap band. Just a, just a note. Um, but once you do that, we're going to go back and through the cap band. We're going to pull a band through just the cap band again, both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And we're going to repeat that exact same thing we just did five more times, so we have seven stitches in total in the cap band, so I'll show you again. So we'll go back through the cap band, pull a band through the whole cap band, both ends back on your hook. Push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And we just keep doing this. So I have three stitches so far, and we want seven total, so I need to do four more. And yeah. So I'm just going to do the stitches. 
you know, one thing I just noticed while filming this is that my nails have still held up. They've been painted um, for like a week and a half, I think. And I think it's because I haven't been painting that my nails are still actually looking good. Usually I get paint all over them. Or polymer clay kind of eats away at the nail polish, so... They usually don't last this long, so it's been surprising. But yeah. I'm just doing... Okay, we need one more. I'll show you how to count the stitches if you lose count. I'm just making sure I have seven. Okay. So once you have seven stitches in your cat band, you're going to want to count to make sure. And the way we count is we start by counting the one on our hook, and then we count the loops going backwards. So this is one, two, three four, five, six, seven. Like that. And then, what we're gonna do is... I'm just debating if I want to switch colors, don't mind me. No, I'm gonna stay the same color, okay. This is just color placement, it has nothing to do with the design, I'm just debating my color placement. But once we've counted, and make sure we have um, seven stitches. Instead of going into the cap band, we're gonna go into this first loop right here, so you're just gonna go into that first loop. Gonna pull a band through that first loop, both ends back on your hook, push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And our C clip will be going on this one. So that was the first row. Um, for the next row, we're going to be increasing everything. So every single stitch we do is going to be an increase, and I'm gonna stay in my same color. It doesn't matter though, you can just ignore my color placement. <laughs> I'm just making a mug. Um, yeah. So, yeah, okay. Like I said, we'll be increasing everything, so let me show you what an increase is. So what an increase is, is you basically do two stitches per loop. This one already has one stitch in it, but we're increasing everything, so we need to go back in and do another stitch. And that'll be an increase. So I'll show you again on the next loop. So you're gonna go in, you're gonna make one stitch, and then you're gonna go back in and do another stitch. And that's an increase. And we'll just keep doing this all the way around. So you're just doing two stitches per loop, basically. And I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. But yeah, we're just increasing everything until we get to the C-clip. So we're just putting two stitches per loop. You know what really throws me off about this design is, like, I don't think I have any designs up to this point that start with, um, seven stitches in the cat band. So, I always nearly mess up that part because I'm, like, so used to doing either six or five, but on this one we do seven, so. It always kind of throws me off, but, yeah. Okay. So, on the one with the C-clip, um, we're not gonna go on that one yet or make a stitch just because we do some stuff a little bit different, but I'm gonna count around to make sure I have... Um, the correct number of loops. So after increasing everything, we should be at 14 loops. So if we start by counting the one on our hook, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, wait, I lost count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So now I'm going to switch colors just because I'm making a striped mug. Um, if your mug's all one color, ignore all my color placement for this video. But if you're making a striped mug, then, um... Now would be a time to switch colors, but we're going to be doing what I like to think of as like a half row kind of. Basically, we're only going to grab the inside of each loop, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So, we're on the one with the C-clip on it, and normally when we make a stitch, we go through the whole loop, right? Well, for this next row, we're only going to be going through the inside part, so we're only going to grab this stitch, and this is what we're going to be making all of the stitches on. Also... Just so that way, if you're doing any kind of striping or anything on your mug, um, you're going to want to slip stitch every time you flip colors. So you'll pull the band through everything on your hook, then put the back one over the front one. And you only do this if you're flipping colors. If you're not flipping colors, you just make the stitch like usual. But um, I'm flipping colors, so yeah. So like I said, we're doing a row all the way around of single stitches. The only difference is we're only grabbing the inner half of the loop, so we're not grabbing the outer half, as you can see, there's the loop, we're only grabbing this inner part, and we're just going to do single stitches all the way around. So basically we're just putting one stitch per loop until we get to the C-clip, and we're only grabbing the inner half of each band. Yeah, 
Okay. I'm making sure we're in the right spot. But yeah, we're just grabbing the inner half and making single stitches. It has been a second since I made this design as I was planning on filming this tutorial like a little, like a week ago, literally almost a little under a week. And then I got sick, so that was fun. But we're fine now, or at least I feel better today. So that's good. I am kind of disappointed though that the 12 days of tutorials didn't work out like I was hoping, literally because I got sick. I literally was in denial basically that I was sick before because I was like, it's my allergies, I'm just gonna be fine. I'll bounce back, you know, it'll be fine. And then it did end up that I was sick and yesterday was a really bad day. Um, and I literally didn't do anything yesterday. But I loomed a little bit, and then I, um, I read a whole book. So, literally, I started the book in the morning, and then by, like, 5 p.m. I had read the whole thing. I'm a little bit of a binge reader. I tend to do that with books. Like, um, I won't read forever, and then randomly I'll be like, you know what, I should read a book, and then I'll read it in another day. It's not good. Like, I never pace myself, especially if it's a good book. One of those you can't just put, like, you can't put down. I'll just binge read the whole thing in a day. But yeah, so I'm going to be switching back to my other color because, like I said, I'm making my mug striped. And basically what that means is when you get to the one with the C-clip, you're going to go through the whole loop again. So on the one with the C-clip, you go through both loops. Then you'll pull this band through everything on your hook and then put the back one over the front one. And we only pull it through everything if we're flipping colors. So yeah, like that. And if we count around, we should still be at 14 loops, so we can count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So now is where it gets a little repetitive. We're going to be doing six rows of single stitches. Um, so at the end of the, each row, we should still be at 14 loops, but we're just doing single rows all the way around. And yeah. And if you're like me and you're alternating colors, you do want to slip stitch every time you get to the C-clip to switch to the other color, but basically we're just doing um, six rows normal. So I'm going to stay and do maybe one, two rows with you, and then I'm going to go off camera and do the rest. Because it's pretty simple. But yeah, we're just going to do single stitches all the way around. And we go through the whole loop again. We're not doing any more of the rows for the rest of this design where we only go through half we go through the whole loop and we just do single stitches so i thought i would tell you guys how i was inspired to make this design while i do some single rows because it's a little bit interesting so um obviously i got inspired to make this because we me and my family my mom made us all hot chocolate and it was like I hadn't had hot chocolate in a while, so I was like, oh, yay. Um, but the only bad thing was, so I was drinking it. And this is kind of gross. So if you don't want to hear this, I just recommend you just go do the rose off camera. But it's kind of a funny story. It's kind of funny because this just always happens at our house. Anyways, um, <laughs> so I was drinking hot chocolate, and I had drank some of it. And I felt something go in my mouth, and I was like, hold up. This hot chocolate doesn't have marshmallows. So I spit it out back into the cup because... I had a feeling it was what it was, and yeah, there was a giant maggot in my hot chocolate. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's basically kind of what inspired me to make this design, because then I, after I drank hot chocolate, I was like, you know what, a Lumagurmi hot chocolate cup would be cute, but it was also, like, so disgusting, because there was a maggot in my mouth, and it wasn't, like, a small maggot, it was a big maggot, <laughs> and it was so bad. Um, our house does have maggot problems, we don't know why, we just get a lot of maggots in various things. I know my brother once was traumatized from a Pop-Tart because he'd been into it and there was live maggots. Yeah, it was worse because he was definitely alive as well, like all kinds of nasty, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know why our house has maggot problems. We've cleaned all our cupboards multiple times and we still get maggots. We don't know where they're coming from, but um, yeah, I, my mom says I was just a lucky one who got a maggot because um, and she checked all my siblings hot chocolates after I had um, found the maggot in mine and Everyone else didn't have maggots, just I did, so that was fun, but yeah. Anyways, once you get to the C-clip, you're going to slip stitch if you're flipping colors and move the C-clip up. And if you count around, you should still be at 14. I think I'm going to do one more row on camera and then we'll go off for the rest. 
but yeah, we're still just doing single stitches all the way around. Like I said, we do this for six rows. So the last one was row one. This one's going to be row two. So we still have to do four more rows after this. But yeah. I just wanted to tell you about my horrifying maggot experience because it was horrifying. I I don't think I've had an incident with a maggot yet until that day. It was just like so gross. <laughs> the worst part is I had drank it a half the cup already. So I don't know if I drank any maggots. I don't think they're harmful. Hopefully not. It's so nasty. I felt that it was like, I honestly feel like it would have been better if it wasn't like such a chunky maggot, but that maggot was like thick. He was a thick maggot. <laughs> it's just so bad. Um, I haven't drinking hot chocolate since then though, for the obvious reason called it was disgusting. Um, but yeah, I'll just definitely have to check. My mom's now using a sifter every time she makes hot chocolate to make sure there's no maggots in the powder. So... Yeah, it's gross. I mean, I feel like whenever you think maggots appear, it's because like, oh my god, your house must be disgusting. And it's not. Our kitchen's clean. It's just, we don't know why. We've had this problem for years and we don't know how to get rid of the maggots. So nasty. But yeah, that's what inspired me to make this design. Because literally after that day, I was like, man, it would be cute if I made a Lumagurumi one. Okay, we're almost back at the start. So once again, if you're making a striped mug like me, when you get to the one with the C-clip, we're going to slip stitch and flip colors back to the, to our other color. So I'm going to get my yellow, then slip stitch, move our C-clip up, and then I'll just continue doing this. So I hope you know what we're doing now. Uh, I'm going to go off camera and do the other four rows just so this tutorial isn't ridiculously long, and then I'll come back and tell you what to do next. Okay, so after we do the six rows, it should look something like this. And I can show you a quick way um, to count if you've lost count of your rows. So as you can see right here, this stitch is attached onto the um, like half row we did where we only grabbed the inner half of the stitch. So we won't count this one. And if you did this multicolored, it's really easy because you just go one, two, three, four, five, six. If not, it's a little harder. Um, usually what I'll do, so we're obviously not counting the stitch down here is I'll start here, and then you just can see that this one's attached to it, so that would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. Like that. It also should just look about this size, so that's an easy way to tell. But once you finish, as you can see, I didn't do the move the C-clip up yet, because we're just going to go in through the one that has a C-clip on it. We're going to pull a band through everything in our hook, and you're going to want it to be the same color as whatever your last um, row of stitches were. You're going to push the back one over the front one, and you're going to pull this really tight. So we're tying it off, basically. And then we're just going to tuck that tail in. Um, I'm going to tuck it in the inside. You don't have to tuck it all the way in, but you're going to want to pull it through some of these stitches. I'm just going to want to hide it in the inside. Like that. So now what we're going to do next is we're going to put the chocolate inside. And I realized right now that I'm going to need my stuffing in a bit, so I'm going to go grab my stuffing real quick. Okay, so I got everything I need, but now we're basically going to be doing the inner layer of chocolate, and I'll show you how we do that. But um, it's pretty simple. Um, you're going to want to get whatever color you want for the liquid you are putting inside your mug. I'm making a hot chocolate mug, so I'm using brown. And it's pretty simple how we do this, but the important thing is basically we're going to do a, like a little row around on the inside. But we're only going to grab the inner half of the stitches, that way they don't show to the outside. And I'll show you how to do that. It sounds more confusing than it is. It's actually not that bad. But basically, you're not going to want to go too deep in the cup either. Um, I can see that this is my top row. I usually do these stitches in, like, the second row. It's super easy to see because I have two different colors. Let me fix my camera so it focus. But basically, you can see these stitches, right? We're only going to be grabbing this part. And basically, because we're only grabbing the inner half, you won't see it on the outside. And we're just going to make stitches all the way around in the circle. So, you just pull a band through, both ends on your hook, back one over the front one. And then we'll move to the next stitch. And it's super easy to see, like I said, because I did two different colors. The camera's not focusing very well. But we're basically just grabbing the inner part of all these stitches. And we're stitching around in a circle. It's a 
a little hard to do sometimes. And it doesn't really matter if you don't grab in the same spots I am. The only important thing is that you're only grabbing the ins hat. That did not come out right. The inside half of whatever stitch you are doing. So that way you can't see it on the outside. I also really couldn't speak there for a second. I'm so sorry. My brain malfunctioned. But yeah, we're just grabbing the inside half of whatever stitch we're doing. And we just keep doing this all the way around a circle. Like I said, it's really easy for me to see where, like, I'm supposed to be grabbing because mainly they're different colors, so I'm just grabbing all from the same row around. So, it's pretty simple. And usually the spot where you switch colors is going to be a little confusing. That's not too bad. Always takes a second to go around in the circle. It's a little hard to loom. You have to kind of squish it so you can see. But I'm almost around. Almost there. Okay, and then once you've circled all the way around and you're back at your first stitch, you're just going to go into that first loop, make a stitch on this one, and then we'll be putting our C-clip on this one. Like that. So now if you count around, um, you might not have the same number of loops as me, but we'll just count anyways. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I have 14 loops around, but the last time I did this, I had 13 loops like around the thing. So you don't have to have the exact same number as me. Um, if you have 12, you're probably fine. If you have 13, you're probably fine. It's just to make the inside chocolate a bit. Um, but right now is when we're going to stuff it because it does get tighter from here and it just gets worse to stuff. So right now is a good time to stuff it. So you're going to want to put your stuffing in. And you can take your hook out. The C-clip usually holds it. But we'll just put our stuffing in. And I think we're good. I don't know if he needs a little more stuffing. I can add more in a bit if I need. We're just going to put our hook back in. And now basically for the next row we are going to be decreasing every other. And what that means is we're going to do a single stitch and then a decrease and then a single stitch and then a decrease. Until we get to the C-clip. And I am just picking up some more brown bands. Believe it or not we're already almost done. This design comes together really quickly. Anyways, this will be our single stitch, so the next one's going to be our decrease, and we haven't decreased at all yet in this tutorial. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to grab the inside part of one loop, and the back part of the next loop, and you just make a stitch on that. Um, it's kind of really hard to see, just because of the whole situation we're in, that we're making like this weird inside row. So, sorry about that, but I'll try to show you so you... I just did a single stitch, so we're going to decrease again. So you grab the inside part of one loop, the back part of the next loop, make a stitch. And then you'll do a single stitch, and you just alternate between doing a single stitch and a decrease. And it is a little hard to see, I'll say that. I just did, what did I do? I did decrease, okay. Do a single stitch. Then a decrease, then a single stitch, and I'm just going to decrease on the one that has a C-clip on it, because why not? It's just where my decrease landed. And at this point you can take the C-clip out, but I'll count around to tell you how many I have, so I should have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine loops. Um, honestly though, with this inside bit, if you don't have the same number of loops as me, you're probably still fine because you can't really see it. 
But now we're just going to decrease everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. We just decrease absolutely everything until we can't anymore. And I know it's kind of hard for you to see what I'm doing right now, but um, it's just because of how tight it is. So, But I'm just decreasing until I can't. Okay. So once you have the last decrease you can possibly do up on your hook, you're going to pull a band through everything on your hook, push the back one over the front one, and then pull tight. And then we'll just pull our tail into the mug. Into the mug. And then we'll just hide that tail a little better. Okay, so I had the tail. Um, you can see the brown a little bit on the sides, but I feel like that's just because I used yellow. Because when I used like this green and purple, you can hardly see it. Same thing with the blue. You can see it a little bit, but it's not too bad. You can see it worse with the yellow, but that's probably just because of the color choice. Um, yeah, so now we're going to do the handle. And to do the handle... Okay. We're just going to come wherever we want the handle. I'm going to put mine right here where I was switching colors, because to me it just looks a little messier. So that way the handle kind of covers it up. And I'm gonna come about right here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two bands. I'm gonna pull it through both ends on my hook. I'm just gonna alternate colors just because I think it'll look nicer. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing this because it's how my mug is. And I'm picking up bands. Okay. But basically, you're just gonna want to chain up two bands six times. So this is one, two. Three, four, ah, my camera's falling. Five, and then six. And once you've chained up six times, you're just gonna come where you want the handle to end, and you can kind of just fold it down, see where it lands. And you'll just tie it in. So you'll just go through part of the mug, and you'll just pull a band through everything on your hook. Push the back one over the front one and then pull tight. You'll hide your tail and then there's our mug handle. And I'm hiding the tail in off camera because I hate hiding them on camera. But there's basically our mug. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do the face and all the little extra bits I put on my mugs because I did a lot of extra things. I put a candy cane in it even though I don't, I've never drinking hot chocolate with a candy cane in it. I've seen it in photos, I've seen it in movies, but I've never done it. I honestly don't know if it's a thing, but I thought it looked cute for our mug. So I'm going to show you how to do all that first. So I'll show you how to do the marshmallows and then the candy cane. So you're going to get a few white bands. I've got too many. You just need as many white bands as you want marshmallows. I think I put three in each of these, yeah. Three is a good number, so we'll do three marshmallows again. And what you're going to do is you're just going to wrap a band around your hook four times. So you can wrap it twice. Wrap it around again, that's four. I'm just gonna wrap all my marshmallows around my hook. We just wrap a band four times. And then you'll just get a brown band. Pull it through so the marshmallow's on the band. And then we'll just tie it into the top here. Wherever we want, it doesn't really matter at all. I'll just tie them in. And I usually don't tuck the tails until I have them all tied in so I can see how they look. We'll just get another band, slide our marshmallow onto it, and we'll use this to tie it in. And all I'm doing to tie it in, in case you don't know how, let me show you. I have the band on my finger, I'll go in to the chocolate. I'll pull, band, pull it through, I'll put both ends on my hook, then I'll push the back one over the front one and pull tight. That's all I'm doing to tie it in. I know sometimes I forget to explain when I tie, so that's all I'm doing. And now what you're going to do is hide all the tails. I'm going to hide them off camera because it takes me a while to get the tails hidden, so I'm just going to go hide all the tails into the mug. Okay, so I just hid all the tails. I just tucked them into the mug, basically just pulled them down in. 
But the last thing is we need to do a candy cane. And you can do it however. You don't have to put the candy cane. I just think it looks cute. So you're just going to want to get some white bands and then some bands of whatever color you want the candy cane. I'm using these purge and lava bands. I've been using different bands to do these. I don't know. It's fun. And yeah. So all we're going to do is we're going to take a band. I usually start with white. So take a white band. Wrap it four times around your hook. Like that. And then you're going to take another band um, in the next color. So for me that's red. Double it. Slide the cat band onto this band. Put both ends back on our hook. And we're going to take another white band. Double it. Slide this on. Both ends back on. And I'll just keep alternating um, colors until I'm happy with the length of my candy cane. Uh, I'm trying to see how many times I chained up this time. So it was one, two, three, four, five, six. So I chained up six times the last time. I guess I'll do that again. So this is the third time chaining on. Four. Five. And six. My god, I don't know why I'm having trouble doubling this band. There we go. And then you'll just take a brown band, slide this onto it, and we'll use this brown band to tie it into the top of our hot chocolate. And usually I like to, at this point, think of where the face is going to be if you're putting a face. So I'm going to put my face right here, so I'll put the candy cane kind of to the side. Like right here. We'll just tie this in. Hide our tail. It is literally so hard for me to hide tails on camera. I don't know why. And then basically you'll have something that looks like this. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to come... I'm going to come about right here. You're going to go through like half the loop so you can see where my hook is. And you're just going to pull up. And this will kind of help round it out a little bit. You're going to have to pull in a couple stitches just to get it to look more candy cane-like because should pull in this one too. But you basically just go through it and then you just pull up a little bit. It'll kind of round it so it looks like a candy cane. Like that. And the very last thing we need to do is the face. So for the face, um, I'm just going to show you how to do I do the eyes and then the cheeks. Um, like I said, you don't have to put a face on your mug. I like putting faces on everything. This one's naked. Well, it's gonna get a face very soon, but it doesn't have one right now. So you just want to get your beads and then some bands in the color. I'll use these. And you're gonna need a string. I thought I had a string here. I do. So you'll just get your bead. My focus is all over the place. There we go. I'm gonna put the... Ah, nearly lost the bead. Barely didn't. Which will just put the bead on the string. And you could use safety eyes. I just. I'm sorry if it cut off weird. I don't know if I cut off while I was talking. Anyways, I'm sorry if it cut off weird there. Someone randomly called me. I don't know why. I film on my phone if you don't know, so that's why that happened. But we're just gonna put our bead on our string. Then you'll put a band on the same string. So, like this. And then you're going to fold over and go back through the bead. And then it should be like this and you'll just slide your bead onto that band. And we'll do this for both the eyes. That was weird though because the same number keeps calling me. I should probably call them back. But the past couple days the same, the same number keeps calling me. I have no idea who it is. Um... I don't mark numbers in my phone either though, but the thing is like the area code isn't for the area where I live, so I don't know who on earth is calling me. Weird. But yeah. And then we're just gonna tie our face right here. Uh I'm gonna put it put it on the wrong color bands. I was like put it right here. Is that too low? No, that's fine. And we'll just tie our eyes in. There's one. And as a Usual, I don't tuck in the tails until I'm happy with where the eyes are, just in case I put them in the wrong spot. Let's tie our eyes in. I really like this mug. It's just such a fun yellow color. And we'll tuck our tails in. This one. 
To me, it's really easy to tuck the tails in on this guy. I know we've been doing a lot of tail tucking, but to me, it's not too bad because they hide fairly easy. And then the very last thing is the cheeks. So we'll come right under where the eye is. I usually come right here. You pull a band through, put both ends back on your hook, push the back one over the front one, and you're gonna wanna pull kinda sorta tight but not super tight, and then hide the tail. Like that. Do that again on this other side. And the cheek placement is honestly just trial and error. Some designs it's easier to get the cheeks where you want them to than others. I don't know why. But that is basically it. So um, if you're wondering how I did the mouth, I just cut a black band and then I get a glue gun and I just put a dot of hot glue and then set the black band on top and that's how I do mouths. Um, I'm hoping very soon to do a tutorial on just how I do the mouths, but for now there's a brief explanation. I don't usually put it in my videos just because I have to go get my glue gun <laughs> and I feel like gluing on camera is just a bad idea, but um, I think that is it for this one. So subscribe if you want to see some more tutorials from me. I know that there's one tutorial coming for a very cute thing. Uh, I'm so excited and so happy with this guy. If you can't tell what he is, he's a present and he's so adorable. He's also a square. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to make a tutorial for him really soon and I'm hoping it'll come up before Christmas. Um, so subscribe if you want to see that. Um, I'll leave my Instagram Etsy and all that down in the description in case you want to follow me in any of those places. Um, on Instagram they always see new designs before you guys do here on YouTube. So you can check me out on there. Um, but yeah, I think that is it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, also, if you make a mug, definitely share it with me. I haven't seen anyone make my wreaths yet either, so if you make anything, please share it to me. I love seeing them. Even if I don't like them right away, I see them, I promise. <laughs> but yeah, uh, now I think that is it. So I will see you in the next one. Bye.